Hey folks, it's Ben. We're here with our 1994 Buick Regal. The issue we're having with it, besides it being an awesome car, is that uh, it gets warm, but not hot. And so what that means is that the temperature gauge doesn't go up very high and the defroster and heater never really get that warm. Come on, you. Ah, oh, there we go. Um, the defroster and the, the heater never get that hot. So uh, in an attempt to kind of diagnose it remotely, what we did is we covered up the grill with cardboard mostly. That's almost like 100% coverage. Didn't actually help it at all. So um, the temperature gauge still isn't going up and we're still not getting a lot of heat out of the, the heater core. So we're dealing with two possible issues here, three actually. The temperature sender could be faulty, which is telling me that it's not reading the right temperature. And the heater core is kind of plugged up, right? So we're not getting uh, very good uh, water circulation through the heater core, and thus we're not really getting uh, good heat into the car. So the car could be at the right temperature, but the temperature sender could be lying to me and the heater core is plugged so I wouldn't know it's lying to me type of thing. And the heater core connections are here and Ugh, this guy <laughs> as they go down to the heater core down there so um, we could flush that that sounds not fun so let's do the alternate which is try the thermostat so uh, what we have here is a uh, thermostat and uh, my understanding is is that it's uh, there's very little info on the internet about this thing to be honest with you but it's a, a thermostat in there and a gasket and two bolts and a bleeder and that's as far as I know all that's in here. So um, the EGR apparently is a pain to get out of the way. You know, I don't think you actually would need to get it out. I saw the one YouTube video I did find, it's like, oh, this is, they didn't actually describe this, they just did this. And it was like a turn left and pull out scenario. And I believe it actually. Uh, so maybe we'll try that, but uh, we need to take that out. The only question I have is, do I need to use sealant on this gasket or not? And if I have the right thermostat to begin with, which I think I actually do. So what we're going to do today is uh, go ahead and pop this guy open. Those look like tens, if I were me. And we'll release this, see what the thermostat is in there. Um, when we bought the car, they had quote unquote overheated it. And so they changed the thermostat and stuff. So my question is, is there even a thermostat in that is the bigger question. So uh, long story short, this video is going to be replacing the thermostat and the easiest way to do it. And we'll see if it fixes the problem. For those of you playing the home game, these are the components you'll actually need. Here's a 195 degree thermostat. And here's the gasket, which will probably sit like this. Is that sticky? It has a sticky side on it. That's cool. So I guess that answers our question. Do we need gasket adhesive? The answer is no. Um, how this sits in there, I know it sits like this, but um, on top, to go below, that's the big question. So we'll see if there's a recess in the block for it there, but let's go ahead and get that out. Uh, taking it out is fairly simple. Easiest way to do it, to be honest with you, is going to use a quarter inch ratchet uh, with a just a little like four inch extension and a socket on the end. That's gonna let us get around the EGR. Um, now this, it's either plastic, probably aluminum, and this housing's definitely aluminum. So be very careful here. Now, if the previous owner was true and they replaced this, this should not be an issue. And shouldn't be on that tight, there we go. So that one's free. And this one's free, so it looks like we're out scot-free. We're not gonna break anything. So let's go ahead and take these out and their coolant will go everywhere. Do I feel like I need to pre-drain this? No. Uh, we are at the high point of the motor anyway. But as our uh, socket gets higher, see if we can use our fingers to take that out. Uh, the EGR does get in the way again. So there's one out. 
And then we'll just take the, and it seems complete, it's dirty. I don't know what the heck they put on that. They were trying to do there. Oh no. 10 millimeter in the snow. Let me grab that and we'll get the other one out. Here. And there it comes. It's gonna be quite shouldered, quite full of crap. I think I might clean these off before we put them back in. So now there's nothing holding on our thermostat housing. So it should be just a grab and a wiggle and out it comes. Boom, and that's that. And we should be able to pull it right back because it's all hose here. Your housing is a little bit in the way. Everything's in the way. Let's go down and over and out and here we go. So here we have our, I don't know if you can see our housing. We've got our gasket there. Nope, it's okay. Maybe. So here we have our thermostat. So it is in there, so that's a good surprise. Um, it says it's 195 degree, so it could be two as well, but anyway. Let's take our new one, which seems to be literally identical. 195 and all that stuff. It's probably an Napa too, right? Let's go ahead and drop that in there. And uh, what next is we've got to scrape this off or peel it off or peel it off will work. Looks like they used RTV and they probably reused the old one. So let me get some tools to clean up that surface. We'll sit it back down and clean those bolts out. So we're almost there. Now, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do this. I actually have a chisel. And what I'm doing is just going around and scraping off any material that's not supposed to be here. There actually isn't that much. And give it a good wipe down. So that our surface is nice and clean. I'm gonna do it to the same one here that's kind of leaking water on us. I can kind of see where our tab might go. This is all aluminum, so this steel chisel could really do some damage if you actually pushed it very hard. So kind of important not to do that. Or use plastic, which would never damage it. That surface is fairly smooth, and this surface is fairly smooth. And here's our gasket, which hopefully it'll fit. Let's poke out these holes here. And it looks like, I don't know where this tab goes yet. It uh, definitely doesn't go that way. It is the right size, so it's gotta go this way. Interestingly enough, it actually shouldn't matter. And it's sticky. So before we undo the sticky, let me clean up these, these bolts. They shouldn't be in the coolant flow, but if it was a sealant, it did a poor job. Let me clean them up. Clean up our bolts on the Cheek Poker 2000 and throw a little anti-seize on there. Now, if I'm wrong and you need sealant, well, we'll find out because it'll start leaking everywhere. Uh, and then we'll just pull each one out, put sealant on it, put it back in the hole. So no big deal there. Let's pull the sticker off. Just kind of neat. Put that in my pocket. And since we got to kind of have it this way, we'll line it up with our housing. And I guess we can't do it that way because it only lines up one way. So it actually has to go on this way. So it actually does seal down to there and there. So the gasket barely fits. <laughs> so like such, and then we'll worm this guy back in. Hopefully without bumping our gasket. I'm gonna unplug this sensor, throttle position sensor it looks like. Just because it's in the way, it's so bad. Oh, the adhesive is gone on our gasket anyway. So let's just go ahead and there. So that's about lined up. That's all lined up. There 
There's one. There's two. You always want to start these by hand. And then we'll torque them down a little bit. How much? It's all aluminum here, so not that much. Now that we've made contact, we're gonna snug them up a bunch. Not too much, it's aluminum, right? Probably there. <laughs> and probably there. So it's a good snug fit, but it's not tight by any means. We'll have to come back and monitor it for leaking. But that's how you change a thermostat. This is a 1994 Buick Regal, but really it's a Series 1 in a W body. That's all you really need to know. Is that ever going to come out? Probably not. So next up for us is we got to re-bleed the system. So I'm not going to leave you hanging, but we'll need to start it up for that. So let's get trucking on that. Let me uh, clean up and I will meet you at the ignition key. All right, that familiar sound of the key and ignition. Three, two, one, contact. Now I've been told the check engine light's on. That's currently not on, so that's handy. Let's turn the fan off. And here's our temperature gauge, and it really never gets above 40, and I kind of want it to. I actually wanted to actually probably touch the bottom of the 100 if we get our way at it. And amps and oil pressure are always good. There it is. So uh, another video after this one will be, we'll get turbo link up and we'll pull the coat off, see what's going on with that thing. Uh, now, what we need, the next tool we need, and I don't know, I want to pump, might or might not put some pressure on it. Oops. We need to uh, open up this bleeder and let the air out. It will probably bleed on our own, but So we gotta get her up to temperature. We'll come on back and re-bleed it. See if we can get any out of that. So uh, I will see you when the car gets warm. I may take it for a spin and park it for a spin. Our gauge is, I think it's higher than it was. So that's a great move. It's above the 40 now instead of being just barely touching it. And But the key is our exhaust coming out of the vents is a lot hotter, which is exactly what we needed. Now, of course, it's a mild day outside. So that's certainly not gonna hurt anything. So next we're gonna just check it for bleed one more time. Yank, yank, pull. Check it for leaks. And I don't see anything blatant at the moment. So cool. Always keep an eye on our tank there. I don't think we actually have to add any water to the I think we're probably okay. And I have a screwdriver. You can tell by squeezing the hose and there's some pressure to it. So now we're just going to crack this open very slowly and have it pee stuff everywhere. Right on the center, that's great. So now we know we don't have an air pocket here and that's exactly what we're looking for. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull one of these out since I know we're not we got a good thermostat. This way when it's back to negative 40, it won't over it won't air cool the engine, but at least now when it's uh, at freezing, we won't overheat the engine either. If you guys have any questions on this or anything else about this book, feel free to ask them. Comments, I'll take those too. 188,000 kilometers on this car, so doing pretty good. Tires are still in fair shape. It hasn't erased them yet. Uh, and my kids are having a back and forth to school at this point, so that's good news. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to leave them and uh, subscribe to my channel Tur Turbo 231 for more exciting videos. I'm going to shoot a video now on uh, why the check engine light's on. And uh, while I'm there, 
I'm going to be able to actually pull what the ECM thinks the temperature of the engine is. That's important because it's a different sensor and it might be closer to the truth. And our, our dash gauge might be just off and that, and that could be the case as well. Uh, but you guys have a good day. Let me just interject because uh, I was shooting another video is we come to our, uh, I'm using a program called TurboLink, which likes to connect to Buick V6s, and in this case we have one. And uh, the coolant per the ECM is on 195 degrees, which is exactly where it wants to be. The car is sitting here idling after we warmed it up, we did the bleeding procedure. Our gauge reads a little bit over 40, but it's exa actually where, exactly where it needs to be. And our vents are hotter now, and I think we actually had an issue that uh, is no longer an issue anymore, so that's fantastic. So um, the engine, coolant sensor is correct. The sender for the gauge might not be quite correct because it's just above 40, which it should be just under 100. 195, we're only talking 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, cooler than boiling, so we'd be a lot closer than, than just 40. So, uh, But that's where the gauge needs to be, so now moving forward, just make sure the gauge doesn't go much higher than that and you know you're all set.